the president, Nanado Dankwe Kofuado, addressed the gathering at the United Nations General Assembly, 79th session earlier today, and he had a few words concerning the election ahead of us and the Electoral Commission as well. Take a look. The Electoral Commission, supported by Ghana's security services, is well equipped to ensure that the will of the Ghanaian people is respected. The 2024 elections will be proof of our enduring adherence to the rule of law, transparency, and the principles of democratic accountability that have guided our nation in recent decades. As my presidency draws to a close, I want to assure this assembly that the upcoming 2024 elections in Ghana will be free, fair, and transparent. The Nairns have demonstrated time and again in the last three decades their strong attachment to democracy, which they will not permit to be undermined. Well, as President Kofuado there at the United Nations General Assembly, uh, where we made the election command center. While he was addressing the gathering at the UN General Assembly, there was a lot happening just a few meters away from the venue of that assembly. There are some Ghanaians living in the U.S., specifically New York, who also protested about a number of issues. In fact, there were two groups, the, a group of MPP supporters who masked up some meters away from the venue and some persons who are also concerned about the state of affairs in the country and also uh, the, the, the making demands of a change in the December 7 elections. Let's hear from the MPP supporters in, in New York who marched up as well to offer support to the president. Take a look. Okay, so these are Ghanaians living abroad. We are so proud of what the president has done for the country. And as he wraps up his, his tenure as president, he is here uh, the 79th session of UNGA. And uh, we are so proud of what he has achieved for the country. That is why we are here. Well, you hear some people shouting at the background, away, away. So those are the, the other group of persons. Uh, these were persons who were not too happy about the state of affairs in the country. They were there as well to make their voices heard. Take a look. We are very disappointed and that's why we left our houses early morning to come here to express our concerns to the president that the Thank country you. is on the wrong course. We need to change and we are asking Ghanaians to do the right thing. Well, so there you have those two groups and these are Ghanaians also making their voices heard just a few meters away from the United Nations General Assembly venue. There. Let's cross over to New York right now live here on your election command center and uh, our international affairs correspondent my colleague sunny abdul rahman is joining us live from uh, the streets of new york right now uh, sunny appreciate your time thank you for joining us here on ghana tonight uh, we see a lot of activity has been taking place outside of the venue when the president was speaking talk to me about it well you know some of these international appearances uh, often attract uh citizens from your country who may be residing in the host country and they may be having a lot of concerns about how the country is governed and we've not we've seen this not just with President Takufado but with other countries as well countries in the Middle East countries in Asia countries uh, from Europe you know the situation in Ukraine we've seen a lot of European countries rallying uh, support for Ukraine and also when countries that are in support of Russia are uh, delivering their statement, they come there with placards holding messages in solidarity with Ukraine. So these are not out of the ordinary, but today uh, was quite unusual because the numbers of people who troop there in support or against uh, the presidency of President Jakubado was quite enormous. A lot of them holding placards uh, with inscriptions such as the EC must go. They want the uh, illegal mining, which has become a dominant issue back home, also addressed. Uh, and a lot of issues. We also saw one side of the group who were really appreciative of the presidency of President Akufado, who were of the view that the pre-senior high school alone 
uh, that has resulted, according to the presidency, some 5.7 million uh, Ghanaian children being enrolled in the secondary uh, education. Uh, that alone, according to them, is, is quite massive, and they, they want to thank the president for that. So we have two groups, some against what the presidency has done, others in support of the presidency. I see. And, and those two groups, we, we heard them, saw them quite clearly uh, there. But they were not alone. There was a third group that you made reference to, the third group of persons who were protesting about these uh, Democracy Hub demonstrators who have been arrested and have been detained as we speak. Sunny, stay with me because uh, that's the issue coming up next year on Ghana tonight. Ghanaians in the United States of America have also joined in the protest demanding that the, the persons, the Democracy Hub protesters who have been remanded should be released. That's coming up next year on Ghana Tonight. We cross over now and still stay on this particular issue. Ibrahim, uh, Sunny Abdul Rahman, my colleague and international affairs correspondent, is still with us here um, on Ghana Tonight. And well, let, let's first of all hear from the Ghanaians in the, the US, specifically in New York, who hit the streets today to also join in the calls by many people to have these democracy help protesters who were arrested over the weekend protesting about the impact of illegal mining they should be released take a look so we are here for one reason in solidarity with our brothers who have been arrested for protesting they are protesting for illegal mining activities causing our water bodies to be poisoned and polluted this is how the water bodies look in Ghana now, except the northern part of the country, the Volta region to the northern part. Every other water body in Ghana looks exactly like this. The reason is the Chinese, in collaboration with the president and his people, are mining gold in, this, in the rivers, in the rivers, in the lakes, and this is what the water looks like. And this is the president of Ghana, Nana Akufuado. And what is happening now is when people raise their voices against the water pollution, he uses the police to arrest them, intimidate them. And as we speak, about 50 of our colleagues are in detention because the, police, the president controls the judiciary. He controls the police service. And people are quiet in the country. And we cannot allow this to continue. And we want the international media, the United Nations, to put the president in order because you cannot hold protesters in prison as well as in police cells without legal representation and medical care. This is what is happening. 60, 60 year olds are getting arrested. Little kids who are, were in, included in the protest are being uh, are detained as we speak. Pregnant women are being detained as we speak. And this is the president of Ghana. This is what illegal mining called Galamse looks like. And I want you to go on the internet and do a search for Galamse or illegal mining in Ghana. And I bet you see all our rivers looking like this. And we cannot even speak. Very soon, Ghana will be importing water. People are having kidney diseases because the water is polluted. The Ghana Water Company cannot even find the right chemicals to be able to um, fix, uh, purify the water for, uh, for normal consumption. Many people are importing water into the country. And this is what we are standing against. We are also in solidarity with our brothers who have been arrested and have been detained. And we are asking the government to release them as soon as possible. Release the protesters now. Release the citizens now. Release the citizens now. Release the citizens now. Release the citizens now. Okay. Hi. to echo the sentiment of many Ghanaians. We want to ask the President, Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu, Mr. President, why are you allowing Galamse to destroy our water bodies and our envir environment? Why? There are a set of um, SDG goals, which are the Sustainability Development Goals, that have been impacted in Ghana, and I want to highlight goals 6, 13, 15, and 3 about clean water and sanitation, climate change, life on land, good health and well-being. We need accountability. Mr. President, in your early campaign, earlier campaigns, you said Ghanaians should not be spectators. 
but we should be citizens. And today, we're here to be citizens to ask you for accountability because you have turned your back on us. You have violated our human rights and this is not democracy, Mr. President. It is tyranny. Also, for the over 40 peaceful protesters that have been detained, detained, we stand in solidarity with them. We ask you, Mr. President, to release them and to give them their basic human rights, allow them their rights to legal counsel, and let their families know about their whereabouts. Mr. President, this is your legacy. Legacy. You are corrupt, you are callous, yeah. callous and you are complices. And today, we stand here to call you out and to hold you accountable. We are the future of Ghana, and we will not sit well, so those were the, the, another group of Ghanaians there outside of the, uh, in fact, some meters away from that venue where the United Nations General Assembly is taking place in New York in the United States. And Sunny, uh, international affairs correspondent, is still with us, connecting with us live right now from uh, the streets of New York. And we also have Noah Adamte. Noah Adamte is uh, one of the lawyers for this Democracy Hub protesters who are in police and prison custody as we speak. Sunny, uh, quite clear in their, in their message, their demand and their voices there. The Ghanaians are on the street also joining in the calls for these protesters to uh, be released, is it not? I didn't get the last part of your question. And, and, I, and I was asking this quite clear that the demand that they are also making that these protesters who have been arrested be released, is it not? Yes, uh, uh, that featured prominently in their demands today. Uh, if you look at the placards they were holding, it had the inscription uh, asking for these uh, protesters to be released. And they, some of them were telling me they, they are scared of even coming back home to also join in the protest because that was the original plan that they had. Uh, the issue of Galamse uh, quite surprising in the president's statement. He made mention of uh, the fact that the international community needed to do more to ensure that the environment is preserved for future generations. But just uh, in his backyard, we have this key concern of uh, Galamse, which has uh, dominated discussions on the local front, and it does appear not much effort uh, is being seen on the part of the authorities to address this concern. So quite a tricky uh, part of the statement of the president of the UN because right when he made mention of the fact that the world needed to do more to preserve uh, the environment, I was asking myself, uh, then where is the commitment to address the issue of the Lampier back home? Uh, if the president wants the uh, world to support Ghana, to support uh, and do all that they can in their respective locations to ensure that the environment is preserved, then it has to lead by example, Alfred. Sunny, appreciate you on this. And, and while you stay with me, let me also bring in Noah Damte. Mr. Damte, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And, and first off, give us an idea of what happened in court earlier today. We understand 13 of the protesters were arraigned before court today. What happened? Yes, um, so... 13 of the protesters were brought in today and arraigned before the circuit court in Accra, circuit court six. So um, all of them were made to, um, were asked to make their plea and all of them pleaded not guilty. So out of the 13, I, I need to say this, out of the 13 that were brought to the court, the first accused person, that's Oliver Bakavomao, and the nine accused person, that is Fanny Otu, were not in court because they are not feeling well and they are receiving treatment at the police hospital. So the two of them did not attend court. They were not arraigned. So 11, um, yeah, 11 out of the 13 were arraigned before the court today. They were made to take their plea and they all pleaded not guilty. So after... If their charges have been read to them, they pleaded not guilty, and then the lawyers moved the court for a motion for bail to be granted to them. So um, out the 13 persons that were supposed to be arraigned, all of them had individual lawyers representing each person. Okay, so even for those who could not attend or who were not arraigned, 
because they were receiving medical treatment. They had lawyers in court representing them. And the motions were moved by each lawyer for their respective um, clients that they were representing in court. So today's proceedings took a longer time. Um, around five, getting to six, we were still in court. And when <laughs> the lawyers for the accused persons were done making their motion to the court for bail, um, the court adjourned proceedings to tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. to listen to the state attorney speaking for the attorney general's opposition to the motion for bail for the protesters. So tomorrow, we are going to hear why the state believes the 11 accused persons that were arraigned, yes, and that, that were arraigned today should not be granted bail. But we are believing that the facts that were laid before the court and the legal arguments canvassed will sway the court to grant bail in the interest of justice to the persons who were arraigned today. Of any update on, on the health of Oliver Bakavamawa as we speak, and then also the other person whom you say they are both receiving treatment. So that the last update I heard was when we were informed in court that they were still in the hospital receiving treatment. So they will not be um, arraigned. That was today, and then the likelihood that they will be presented tomorrow or the few days after was not a plausible conclusion to arrive at. So we know they are in the hospital, but we have not received um, any updates since we left hospital, but they are receiving treatment. And confirm this for me. We have some information that a pregnant woman is also part of those who have been uh, uh, detained or are in police custody as we speak. Yes, yes. So there is... Um, a pregnant woman who has been detained, um, as we speak, she was part of the group that came to court yesterday, and um, she was remanded to police custody. Um, but apart from the pregnant woman, which is a very serious issue, and we are hoping that the Attorney General's office, the Women's Caucus in Parliament, the Ministry of Gender will intervene and, and see to it that the pregnant woman does not spend the two weeks in, in cells or in custody because that's, that, that will be um, unacceptable in the face of our criminal justice system. But beyond that, there are persons who are remanded to custody who are suffering serious um, medical conditions. There is a lady who was suffering from tetanus who, who was before the court. There is another lady who is diabetic and asthmatic. And since she was picked up on Sunday, she had not received any medical treatment. And even when her relatives had brought um, medical um, drugs to be given to her, they were deprived of the chance of giving the drugs to, to the woman. And there is a young man who also has a kidney infection. And um, I remember before we went to court, one of her relatives consulted us and was telling us that he needs his medications urgently because he has never gone a day without the medications. But there are serious people, have serious health issues affecting persons who have been remanded to police and prison custody. And um, we are hoping that in the days ahead, we will repeat our motion for bail before a different court and the next court we go to, for the people who went to court yesterday, the next court we go to, we would see to it that they, they are released and attend court from home. Uh, I do appreciate you for, for this update and also uh, we'll keep an eye on how things play out uh, tomorrow because you are all expected in court. Uh, gentlemen, I, I thank you so much for all of this update and for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Noah Damte, thank you so much, a private legal practitioner, lawyer for uh, the protesters who have been arrested. The Democracy Hub protesters, uh, Sunny Abdul Rahman is my colleague, our international affairs correspondent here at Media General, connecting with us live from the streets of New York, where the UN General Assembly is taking place. Sunny, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Appreciate you. And in the coming days, co continue to connect with you.